All right, so today we're gonna have another video, this one all about converting within the metric system. So in class, I've talked a lot about how I really prefer the metric system for a variety of reasons. One being, it's a lot easier to convert our units within it. Um, if you're familiar with that US customary system, which you are, because that's what we use here in the US, um, conversions can be really hard. You get weird fractions, and when you're measuring things, you get, um, you know, again, those weird fractions. And so the metric system is really nice. We're kind of avoiding those fractions because we don't have them. And then just converting between a bunch of different units is actually really, really easy. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So the first thing that we need to kind of talk about is going to be this on the screen right here. Um, and now this is what we call the metric staircase, um, kind of because it looks like stairs. Um, now you'll notice there's a words in here. So there's kilo, hecto, deca, then we'll talk about this basic unit in a second, deci, centi, and milli. Now those are all prefixes that we'll use uh, for our different measurements. Now the basic unit is gonna be whatever that um, non-prefixed unit for that type of measurement is. And so for example, that could be something like a meter or that could be something like a liter. Um, it could be like a gram. All of those different things. Really, the way you can tell, um, one easy way, and you can remember all of these different uh, measurements, or you could just kind of think, okay, well, does it have a prefix or not? If it doesn't have a prefix, then it's going to be the basic unit. If it has a prefix, then it'll find a place in one of these squares. So how do we use this is kind of that next question. Well, um, with this, we have a little bit of information here on these sides. So it says to convert to a smaller unit, you move the decimal point to the right or multiply. And to convert to a larger unit, you move the decimal point to the left or divide. So really what it is, is I a lot of times think of it kind of like a uh, board game. So if I given a unit, I'll start, so let's say I have something that starts with the prefix is deca, and so I'll start at where deca is and say I wanted to get to deci, and so then I would move to here. And you just count the spaces like you would in a board game. So then it would be one, two. And in that case, well, we move our decimal places to, our decimal place two places to the right, because I want one, two, and I was moving to the right. Um, so let's do a few examples. So I think that's kind of the best way to actually understand this is just work through a few of the problems. All right, so here's our first example. So an ant has traveled 2.36 kilometers in his lifetime. How many centimeters is this? So we're kind of curious. We want to know, okay, so we travel kilo or 2.36 kilometers and we want to get to centimeters. So we'll be starting here and we want to get all the way over here. So if we're gonna go ahead and do that, let's just say, okay, so we are starting here and we want to end up going to here. So we wanna, we are starting in kilo, we wanna to get to centi. So uh, here, let's just circle, so we're right there and we wanna to get to here. So if that's the case, then we're gonna to have to move a certain number of distances. And so like I said, if you just kind of count it, um, we, are, well, we can figure it out. So if we just go one, two, three, four, five, then we know we have to move our decimal place two, or two places, five places to the right. Um, sometimes you can do it this way too. Instead of just counting the spaces, some people like that, you can also just kind of do little lines like this, that'd be two, three, four, five. And the reason sometimes people like to do that is because that's gonna kind of look like how it is we're gonna move our decimal place. So if we go up to our answer, or our number right up here, and I'll just move it right there in just that question to make it easier. So if we do that, then we're gonna move it one, two, three, four, five. So now you'll notice something, and then, well, my decimal place will go right there. Or anything. Um, you'll notice something, and we have these blanks after we get past our numbers, so our numbers end here, and then now we just have these little blanks here. Well, when we have those blanks, these little openings, uh, we just put a zero there. 
And so that's as simple as it needs to be. So then I can just take and add a 0, 0, 0, which really what this all means is so then my answer is going to be 2, 3, 6, 0, 0, 0. And now remember our unit is going to be centimeters now. We'll go back, we'll add that comma. So that means our answer is 236 hundred thousand centimeters which is a lot which makes sense though it makes sense our number is getting bigger because you're going from kilo which is worth a thousand units to a centi um, which is worth 0 0.01 units uh, so it makes a big difference right okay let's do another one all right so example two we have tom brady's record for most passing yards in a single season is 4,786.88 meters. How far is this in kilometers? So in this case, we're going from meters to kilometers. So now looking at this, we're like, well, now wait a minute. I have meters here. I don't see that anywhere on here. What do I do? If you remember from the very beginning, that is going to be what our basic unit is going to be. So we're starting right here, and now we're going to be moving to kilometers, is where we want to end up, which is going to be right up over here. So that's what we want to do. We want to get from our basic unit, which is our meter, all the way to kilo. So now in this case, you can already tell we're moving to the left, which means you're going from this kind of the middle of the staircase to much higher in the staircase, meaning our number should be smaller because the kilo is worth a lot more than the basic unit. In fact, it's worth a thousand times more. So if we kind of go with our same strategy and just kind of count, we got one, two, three, or again, we can do the one, two, three. And so that's the case, then we have three places, and now let's kind of put an arrow there so we know the direction, three places to the left. So if I now go up to my decimal place, I just move it, one, two, three. Right, now this time I don't need to add any extra zeros in any direction because we are right here. This is where my decimal place is gonna be. Um, so now I just gotta write out those numbers. And now we can just keep all of these numbers. I'm not gonna be too worried about rounding it correctly. Um, for now, I'm just worried about you getting that decimal in the right place, so you can just kind of keep all those numbers. That's absolutely fine. So if we do that, then we're going to get, so for our answer, we're going to get 4, and then we'll have our decimal, 7, 8, 6, 8, 8. Now, remember, we got to make sure we use the right units, not meters anymore. It's kilometers. Right, so then we have 4.78688 kilometers, meaning it was just short of a 5K, right? So a lot of people run 5Ks, or if you've ever ran one, so that kind of gives you an idea of what that distance would be. So absolutely. All right, let's move on to our third example. All right, so here's our third example. So I have five milliliters of water. How much is this in hectoliters? So again, where are we starting? So right now we're starting in milliliters, so we're starting way over here. And now we're trying to get to hectoliters, which is gonna be way up here. So we're gonna move quite a distance on our little staircase. And so now again, if we just kind of count those spaces, we have one, two, three, four, five. And now it's five in the left direction, right? So if we want, we can draw on those little letters. We got one, two, three, four, Five, right, if we wanted to do it that way, um, to kind of demonstrate how that decimal place is going to move. So if that's the case, we got to move five places to the left. Great. Now let's look at our number. Now you're going to notice something. Our number right here, there's no decimal, right? We don't have a decimal here. And this whole time now, let's move a decimal. Well, now do we do? We don't have a decimal. Well, it's really quite simple. When we have a number and there doesn't appear to be one, the decimal is just right here when you just write it. Because if I wrote the number 5, that's also equal to 5.0. That 0 doesn't do anything, and that decimal doesn't do anything for that. So instead of writing 5.0 for all of our numbers, then we just write it as 5. So again, these don't really do anything, so we just write it because there's no sense in writing all this if we don't need it, so we just write five. So whenever you have a number where that des or there's no decimal visible, it's not written out, that just means it's at the very end of the number. So um, another example of that would be, say I had the number of a thousand, and I just give you that, that decimal 
is going to be right here at the very, very end um, because it doesn't really do anything, so we drop it. So really that decimal place is going to be right there in that example. So that'll work for all numbers that you don't see the example or the decimal for um, in that. Okay. So if we move our decimal place five places to the left, which is what we got to be doing, we got to go one, two, three, four, five. And then my decimal is going to be right there. So if that's the case, then remember I got to add in my zeros here. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to have four zeros on my decimal and then four zeros. So that means this is for an answer is going to be 0 0.00005. Now it's going not, it's not going to be uh, milliliters, right? It's going to be hectoliters, remember? So you'll notice too, I also wrote this zero right here. Typically when we have a decimal place, instead of just putting decimal and then write in our numbers, we put a zero right before it. That way it helps distinguish where that decimal place is and it's easier to read and doesn't get mistaken for like a period or something like that. So um, that's why that zero is there. It's not, I didn't put, you know, miscount and put five zeros here because remember there was only four. I just put it there because typically you're supposed to write those in front of that decimal. All right, let's move on to our next example. All right, here we are in our example four, and this will be our last example. So if I have a mass of 90 kilograms, so now remember our decimal place will be right here, right? Just like in the last one, so it's gonna go right there. We just have 90, it'll be the same thing as a 90.0. So our decimal place goes right at the end of that number. How much is this in milligrams, or MG would be that abbreviation. So we're trying to go from kilograms to milligrams. So we're gonna make quite the jump. So we're gonna have kilo, and we're going to want to go all the way to milli. So if that's the case, again, we can count them up either like a board game. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or we can do our little um, kind of skipping stone type of thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we could do it that way too, and again, to kind of give you an idea of what it'll look like when we actually move that decimal place. And so now we're moving to the right, right, because we're moving across the page in the right direction. That's another way you can kind of determine how, what way you're going to move them, right? Um, and we're going to move six places. So if that's the case, then we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And so my decimal will be right there, and if I fill in those zeros, one, two, three, four. I'm going to add four zeros. On, oh, I'm sorry, not four zeros. I'm not even reading it in here. I'm going to add six zeros. I'm sorry. Um, on to this number. So I'll get a, a rather large number. And so if that's the case, then I'm going to get nine. And then I have, that's the 90. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. I can add in those commas. And then we're going to have milligrams. So we have 90 million milligrams is equal to 90 kilograms. I do this example for kind of one big reason. One, it gets you, or a couple, I should say. Um, one, it gets you to use the full staircase. Two, it gives you perspective of how much greater a kilogram is as far as size to a milligram. Now they're both units we'll regularly use um, actually, kilogram is that SI unit, if you remember. We'll use milligrams or measuring really small things, but there's a lot of those in a kilogram. So it gives you a good idea of how um, different magnitudes, different values that these units have. And that finishes up this video. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.